Thanks for stopping by guys and welcome back to Scram Kink. Now today we're going to be looking at a new main battle tank. This is the main battle tank Mark 23 Galliant. Now this is the first tank that I've built that was specifically made for the role of the heavy tank. I have done other heavy tanks before, but the majority of those were medium tanks that were then converted into a heavy tank role with extra armor. One of those being the Bastion, which was the Mark 13 which later got upgraded with new armor, and then upgraded again with even heavier armor to become the Bastion. So like I said, the Galliant is the first sole purpose built heavy tank. And the reason for that is, there's quite a few reasons actually. One of the big issues with a lot of my older tanks was they all used suspension which you can actually see here in the Bastion. The suspension pieces are really good for suspension because they're really easy to adjust, but there are some issues with it. They do create quite a bit of lag and they can only hold so much weight. And even at max strength, which is 20, the suspension pieces break under too much stress, especially how I was using them with tanks. Once a tank got to a certain weight, it either glitched out or lagged unbearably. So I had to start working on other suspension types. Now I did work with some bogey suspension. I did work with electric engine based suspension and a few other variants, but this is what I settled on. This uses a torsion bar. Let me actually lift it up so you can see under it. it uses kind of a torsion bar suspension where the wheel is attached to this long arm and that arm is held at an angle by a controller. If you don't know, controllers do have a lot of force behind them, but you can still move them under certain circumstances. Especially if you're working with piston engines, you'll realize that the bearings that are hooked up to controllers can still rotate to some degree, and that's what this takes advantage of. So if I put right there, it still will flex and turn, even though it technically shouldn't because controllers, but so on. I can lift this up and I'll get another wheel. And this is how the suspension works. So without the weight regulation, I can actually really start working on heavy tanks. This was originally supposed to have a six round auto cannon in it, which by auto cannon, I mean auto loading cannon which is something that's not exactly new. It was present since the Mark 20. But I ended up going back to the four round auto cannon for a few reasons. One was frame rate. Having six rounds in the cannon caused the frame rate to be very low. And even though I probably could work around that by moving some of the bearings around, deleting a few here and there, it also had another issue. Because this is a heavy tank, I want it to be very survivable. And the issue that was happening was when a round would hit near the front of the turret or near the front of the gun, the blast radius would actually hit the rounds that were here. So the extra two rounds were getting detonated from hits that would normally not kill a tank. Normally these rounds would be far enough away from the blast radius that you would survive. But with six rounds, yes, you do have more firepower, but you're more likely to get ammo racked which was a big issue for the Mark 22. I tried to alleviate with the Mark 22 heavy armor variant, and hopefully that's something that I've completely eliminated as much as I can in the Mark 23, which is this tank. So let's actually give a bit of a demonstration. This cannon and tank works exactly like all of my other tanks do. So one is left, two is up, three is down, four is right, Five fires the main gun, six fires the aiming machine gun, and let's aim for that rock in the distance. This gun aims with the machine guns themselves, so wherever your spud guns land, you know you're going to hit with the round. So right now I'm hitting that rock in the distance, there goes a round, I hit the rock with the round, there goes another round, and you can see the accuracy. It's the exact same as all of my other guns. It was purpose built as a six round, but then it was modified to be a four round for the reasons I previously stated. 
A few other features to note on this tank that are a little bit special. It does have a line of sight aiming system. It's not as accurate as the spud gun aiming, but if you are trying to maintain stealth, it is an option. As well as it does have a loader seat. Now, I didn't make a AA gun for this loader seat like a few of my other tanks did. Like the Mark 18 and the Mark 19 both had machine guns or AA guns that the loader can control. I thought about doing it for this tank, but I decided against it simply for complexity's sake. So the person that is in this seat whenever you're done firing could easily hop out and reload. Load these up. This is a bit of a difficult tank to load. It's a little bit easier from the driver's seat just because the driver's seat doesn't have this weird hump in the seat. There we go, there's two rounds loaded. And I think another thing to talk about is the armor. This does use the I-beam wedge piece armor. The majority of it is I-beam. The wedge pieces are really there for decoration mostly, but they do help with the armor value. And there is a fun little feature underneath the forward armor on this tank. Now to demonstrate that little feature, it would probably be best to shoot the tank. However, I want to show off that little feature first. So let's actually just put it around here and detonate it. And we aren't there yet. So the first part of the armor, about the first half to maybe first third of the armor, is just solid I-beam armor. What you'd expect on most tanks. But once you get here into the back... This has a bit of like a Swiss cheese effect to it. Something I noticed with old tanks was whenever a round would hit, if it didn't explode on contact, sometimes what it would do is it would try and find a nook or cranny to cram the round into because it realized that the round was inside of an object where it shouldn't be and would try and force it out to the nearest empty space. A lot of times that was either the turret, it would land in the turret basket, sometimes if it hit the cheek it would actually land up in the driver's seat, and sometimes if it passed through the entire tank it would actually land in the engine bay and get stuck in there, which would cause some issues with your driving. So my goal was to take advantage of that. Since the round is going to look for the nearest open gap, I put a lot of open gaps in the front armor. So hopefully when the round hits, it will f try and wedge itself into a space like this. Instead of going all the way through to the turret ring. A few other things to note with this, the turret ring houses all of the major components for the gun. The engines that actually steer the turret are attached to the rear. And the turret also has its own miniature armor. To be honest, if something hits this armor, it's probably going to disable the tank anyway, but it is there as an extra precaution, just in case it absorbs a round or two. Other than that, I think that's all of the technical aspects to talk about with this tank, so I'm actually going to spawn two of these and shoot themselves. Alright, and now we are at a half decent range. This is kind of the normal range I'd expect you to get into contact with an enemy and have to fire back. So let's quickly aim up. Right now we're hitting the lower glacis. We go one round. Let's actually go check the damage real quick. So that round barely penetrated the front armor, took off the frontmost wheel, and didn't do much else. So that was a pretty nice hit with little to no damage. All right, so the second round, I'm gonna aim for the cheek. I'm gonna aim for the loader side cheek. That was a bounce, no damage. Fire again. That actually went down the track and I wanna see what it did. I wanna see if it actually got into the turret ring. So that looks like it traveled all the way down, took out, what, one, two, three of the wheels. It did take out some of the skirting, but it didn't penetrate into the actual turret ring, which is right here on the other side of this wall. I'm curious if this is still drivable, because it does have one wheel, and for the majority of my tanks, as long as you have that one wheel, it is technically still drivable. I'm turning left, or turning right there, technically. Let's go straight. 
it's really difficult to keep straight, but this is still drivable. You can't really turn left because that single wheel doesn't have that power. Hmm. Hey, there we go. I'm turning left. It's really difficult, but it can be done. So the tank's not out yet. Let's take a few more shots. We got one more round in the chamber before we actually have to reload. That went straight through the turret and detonated on the inside, causing it to ammo rack. So this gun did actually have all its ammo in it, so I think that's what we struck. We might have actually struck the driver's seat and the proximity to the actual cannon caused the ammo rack. Oh no, it actually hit directly inside the cannon apparently. Uh, so let's go ahead and put this on a lift, because if not it's going to try and run away. And I'm kind of happy with that. I kind of can't ask for better because that last round, that killing round, was a glitch essentially. It glitched through the armor. The two rounds that did hit, actually three rounds that did hit, one of which was a bounce, which is optimal. One of which barely did any damage whatsoever. The third one did kind of knock out our driving, but it didn't disable us that badly. So overall, I'm really happy with the armor. Camouflage, as you've probably been able to tell, is my standard of camouflage. I do enjoy it. It's probably not the best in most situations, but it still works, so I'm happy with it. So I hope you enjoy the MBT Mark 23 Galliant. This is my first ever purpose-built heavy tank. Oh, that was around that bounced. That's where it went. So this is the first purpose-built heavy tank. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think this is going to be around for quite some time. The Mark 22 did have a long lifespan, even though I didn't do many battles with it. It was really hard to replace just because of how on the nose it was. Now, I do think the Mark 23 here, the Galliant, might just replace it. It's got better armor, has just as good of a gun, maybe a little bit better. Eh, they're, for the most part, they're the same gun, unfortunately. And I'm really happy with how it looks. It looks proportional, which the Mark 22 did look okay, but the heavy armor variant of the 22 looked ugly as hell. So I'm going to end this video here. If you did enjoy, please leave a like. Any suggestions, leave in the comments down below. If you enjoy the channel, enjoy what I'm doing, please subscribe. It helps out a lot. And right now, shares help the channel the most. So if you do want to help the channel, please share this episode with a friend. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for sticking around. And until next time. Peace.